Testing, 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 one, two. Check, 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 check. Am I on the internet? I am on. All right, warning. I got a little haircut. I got a little bit of a haircut. Just warning you. If you're like, oh my God, what happened? It's just a haircut. It's all going to be all right, I think. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It is coloring day. Yay. Well, it's stream day on this channel anyway. My name is Kurt. Welcome. Uh, what's going on? How are y'all? My, everything's going no uh, yeah that's a no drop frames all right we're good so today what's going on today we are uh doing some more black box chronicles which i'm very excited about the art in this book has been incredible the story is very very cool it's very um it's uh it's emotional at times and funny at times and intense at times and i'm very impressed with this book uh, check it out at blackboxchronicles.com. How about that for a for something that sounded like a pitch or something? Um, but no, uh, yeah, this is uh, Drew Moss, and uh, this is a different, uh, I think a similar universe, uh, same universe, I think, different, uh, uh, different characters. If you saw the first one, but uh, hey, Jason, how's it going? Thank you for your membership, as always. Thank you. And uh, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. Um, this ship, I'm going to say that, uh, this ship is actually, this style of ship has been established already in a previous um, page from this. It's it's similar anyway. And so um, I brought that over here just to remember what I did because I don't remember what I did two days ago, much less whenever I colored that. But uh, if you guys have questions at any point, feel free to ask. Fire away. Uh, I got a new video that's like an actual tutorial almost. <laughs> if you haven't checked that out, uh, do watch that. All right. If you're new here, I'm going to explain layers. <laughs> My layer stack. I'm not going to explain layers. Uh, the inks layer are, uh, I'm going to put them on a normal layer. Uh, but I'm going to hit this little button right here that makes all the transparent uh, the white pixels transparent. And uh, so we see right through it. And this is, uh, is going to be the base colors. And these are the flats, which I will set as a uh, reference layer because I want my wand to pick from that layer like this. And this is a different um, different feel on this story. And so I definitely um, want to do something a little different than uh, my last one with just the cool sort of welcoming environment. Uh, maybe something will lean this another direction a little bit, maybe. Uh, let's see what happens. <clears throat> Excuse me. How's your health going lately? I've heard some posture back problems or something. No, like I'm, 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 I'm better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better by the day. Um, it doesn't even make sense how good I am. <laughs> and let's see, is this thing flatted separately? Great. Um, we'll make that white. And what did I do last time? So the last time, space was green and blue and yellow. Maybe it'll be different over here. Great, I need more tutorial videos. <laughs> me, me too, me too. All right, so let's start. I'm going to grab as much as I can here. It's going to all be... In the same color family most of this stuff yep 
it. Maybe this, maybe we do a little, so this is a little bright, kind of cheery looking panel. I, I think maybe we do this one like, maybe not so much. Maybe not so cheery. I think that would fit this story a little bit better. We'll go maybe warm. Uh, oh, there is a light from the top. I was about to screw up. Well, we'll do it both ways. <laughs> but it's, it's space. We can do what we want. I don't know why that makes it doesn't make sense. But, you know, I'm trying. And then we'll do, uh, let's see, maybe ominous, ominous color, uh, What's spooky? Let's see, maybe red. Maybe they're like drifting under this huge red nebula that just so happens to be the color of danger and drama and <laughs> all of that. That's what this is. Hey, Masato, how's it going? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, and Angela, welcome. Thank you for all the members that are here. I appreciate it. I see your little icons. <laughs> In space, no one can watch you run with scissors. Stay weird, chat. <laughs> Hello. How's it going, people? Um, I got some of the funniest comments. I mean, really nice comments on that on that video I did. I'm I'm really happy with that video. That's the most happiest I've been with a video in a long time most happiest is probably may not be a phrase but um of course it like i think distills a lot of my thoughts better uh about how i think about color than when i tried to distill my thoughts on color theory <laughs> so if if i've ever done a color theory video and you're like i don't understand anything this guy's saying try try this one i i think i did a better job of uh explaining myself possibly maybe haven't had time to watch the whole thing gotta finish it yeah awesome awesome You're talking about the video in the marketplace. I thought it was great. Helped me understand the whole breaking the pattern thing. Good, 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 good. That was the goal. And that was also the debut of of rubber band color theory on the channel. Uh my my rubber band analogy. It it has been uh discussed often. <laughs> often here, but but not in an actual video, I don't think. So I was happy to finally do that too. Sorry you're late. <laughs> I'll get your homework. You're forgiven. And let's see. I'm thinking just to make this thing look like it's not just uh, flat surfaces I'm gonna like just sort of hint at stuff going on because you do if you do little bits of little detail like this in the right places people like oh man look at all that crazy detail he did it's like it's not really that crazy it's just a few things but your brain sees all these little uh little shifts and 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 changes and goes oh man that, that's a really super detailed look at all that stuff like it tricks your brain twix it twix it twix their brain tricks is what i'm trying to say It just makes it look like there's more there than there is. Because see, only what a, a, a detailed like a, f a quarter of this, and it's like, yep, now it looks way more detailed. <laughs> this is all on a normal layer uh, 
because I've been working that way a little bit lately. All right. I'm wondering what all is meant to be maybe windows. Is that a window? Maybe. Yeah, I got a feeling this is meant to be a different texture. Don't quote me on that, but maybe. If it's not right, it's easy to change. <laughs> A few little cast shadowy things down in the little corners where it looks like the light might not really make it too much, at least from these angles. Yeah, in space, there's so much in comics that you, you basically, just like in movies, you have to like just kind of roll with something that looks cool because a lot of times like what's real might not even look good <laughs> you know it's like there's no explosions in space in real life well that's no fun you know or at least not explosions like you're used to seeing them you know in John Wick movies or whatever <laughs> I'm glad you're a coloring channel and not in learning English one. <laughs> what did I, yeah, what did I say? There's no telling what I said. Uh, thanks for the advice you've been giving the Discord. Uh, getting those little critiques as you go without waiting for the next class is really helpful. Yeah. All right. Um, so we have, we're going to do my patented star coloring trick. Um, it's not actually patented. So you see how... Here's what the stars look like up close, all right? They're really, really small little dots of light. And because they are because they are so small, uh, I'm not really done with this ship yet, but I'm 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 going to move on for now and do something else uh, and probably come back to it. Um but if you just color them white. Like if I take this and go this and this and it's filled with white. So you can see them. It looks like stars. It looks great. Um, but you can dress them up just a little if you want to. So what I'm going to do is control click the inks layer. Now remember the inks layer is on a transparent layer. So the only thing on the layer are is black and any gray tones that happen to be in here. I don't think there are any. Um, but um, if I control click that, it's going to... And now our stars are sparkling. So, if I control click that, it selects the contents on that layer that have pixels in them. So, it basically means that we're selecting 
the inks themselves. So I'm going to flip that. Um, I've got a button for it, but you can also, it's like control, shift, command, something. Uh, and then I, I think, will invert it. Um, or you can go to select, invert, selected area, control, shift, I. I was right. Um, so now our stars are sparkling, and uh, the transparent stuff is now selected, is what this means. So if I flip back to my regular wand and select that panel, uh, it is now, uh, because the wand is set to intersect with the selection, as they call it, or select from selection, it just then selects the background. All right. So now I can take that uh, sparkling uh, star stuff. We can expand that by like two pixels. Go back and watch this slower uh, if you're not getting it all, because um, <laughs> this is a lot, I know. So now we've expanded it. We made them a little bit bigger. And so I'm going to take a layer on top. Uh, we'll set to hard light, let's say, and get a color. And I'm going to use my little airbrush. And you see we're actually getting a few more looking stars coming, showing up in here that we didn't even see before because, uh, you know, Drew drew a bunch of little bitty stars that were hard to see because they were so small. So what that does is it it gets us where we can see a little bit better. Now, um, I'm just gonna do this kind of everywhere. And, you know, if you do it this way, it's fine. It, 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 but it looks very kind of uniform. And so uh, you can put a mask on this and, you know, maybe dial it dial it back in a, in a, in a, in a few sections, like maybe create some you know little bands of stars so where some you can see a little bit better than others some you can't you know just so that it's not uniform because space well by volume is pretty uniform but from from an art story standpoint um you know we don't want it to be that uniform now if you get really close to this you'll see that the stars are actually square now that was that's because of when i expanded a selection it expands them in a square um if you don't want square stars, then uh, then I'm gonna run a little blur, just like that. And now our stars sort of look like they're glowing. Yay. Uh, let's see, uh, da, 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 da. time to put the work to the side. Yes, uh, thank you to all of you that watch when you should be doing something else. I, I appreciate it. All the tickets that aren't getting closed, all the food not getting made, whatever is happening, I appreciate you guys sacrificing your uh, job and well-being to watch some dude change the color of pixels on the internet. <laughs> but welcome, welcome, SCS. Uh, yes, I understood the rubber band theory very well. I've never heard it explained like that before, so it was new and refreshing. I think that's mine. If, if anybody else starts throwing around rubber band color theories, just know that they stole it from me. Uh, let's see. Oscar said the things should be beautiful, but they should have function. I guess that applies to color. Uh, sure, I'm sure it does. Uh, one reason for the my most recent rejection was the fact that I had no stars depicted in a background when the camera was right next to a star where no stars would be visible. Is that true? I, I can never tell when you're being facetious, Chris. Uh, that's hilarious if that's... I mean, that's awful. I mean, and not hilarious. Um, unless it was meant to be. Uh, on Clip Studio, how do you know if the colors you're using uh, in Photoshop, there's a gamut warning? Uh, I don't really use the gamut warning. I, I will sometimes... Actually, most of the time, I will keep... Uh, the there There is a CMYK preview if you control Y. Uh, this one right here is 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 pretty close and so uh i just uh my mutant power is knowing what's printable honestly after 10 years that's my i just kind of know uh but if you don't know i do recommend running with some sort of uh you know um what you call it preview on or something and uh uh, I'm making a little levels adjustment here. Just because I want to brighten this up, but I don't want to think about it very much. 
<laughs> levels are great for that. Um, let's see. But sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to color more than talk in the chat these days. I do get a lot more done when, when I'm not. But I, I, I do want to try to catch up on y'all every now and then. So sorry if I, that, that bothers you. I'm going to stop and talk to people sometimes. Because I like it. <laughs> uh, let's see. That looks great. Thank you. I just did some stars that look less cool. But in fairness, I don't think they were done well before they got to me. I'm sorry, Jason. Not everybody can draw as well as, you know, Drew Moss here. I mean, Drew... Uh, man, I, I Drew has been drawing i think since i've been coloring at least and and we both kind of ran i think in some of the same little circles online early on in our careers and so same thing with eric the other guy that i'm working on this and so it's 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 very cool to me to uh get to like pick up with these guys that i started with a long time ago I'm not doing a very good job of showing that this is a different plane, am I? No, I'm not. Uh, so let's fix that. If you have a plane that changes, you should be able to know that <laughs> with, with the color. There we go. That's better. Yeah. Lovely. It looks ominous, right? Ruddy mysterious. <laughs> Anyone get that joke? Um, let's see. Not entirely true. Not the only reason. Just one piece of feedback given by the editor. So, so you went with like the realistic, the old, like the moon landing. It's pretty famous that on the moon, you couldn't see the stars because of the exposure. So you were just, you know, you're just being realistic in your space depiction. And yeah, and sometimes you just have to ignore all of that and <laughs> do something that looks better. <laughs> Uh, Drew has been around for a minute. I got a great Wolverine Limited series. Uh, number one cover reimagined by him. He's a nice guy and uber talented. Agreed. Yeah, I think we've met somewhere. Uh, hey, Paolo. Welcome. Uh, we've met somewhere. I can't remember where it was. But we've, we've known each other on, on the internet for a while. I, I think that concept is still funny to me. Like, as a 43-year-old that wasn't born online, um, I still think it's like... Just fascinating that uh, we have these people that we run around in uh, circles with, and you can know them and not really know them at all. And I don't, yeah, it's, I mean, in coloring, especially, like, I don't know, a lot of the projects I'm on, they, you know, they treat colorists well. All the projects I'm on. Um, all right, so I'm going to select everything that is behind him. It's turning red every now and then because I'm hitting the letter Q, which is easier. It's a quick mask, which to me is easier to see than the little marching ants. And so, uh, like all of that, I'm going to... I will probably make that selection again, so I'm going to say P2BG, panel 2 background. That way I can just grab that whole thing behind him if I want to. Uh, let's see. Whoops, wrong layer. Let's lock that so we don't screw that up.
Hey, it's actual cylinders. <laughs> that's funny to seven people, maybe, maybe. That's a, that's very inside baseball. I break everything down in basic shapes almost into cylinders. And so those are just cylinders. We don't have to break them down at all. Get it? It's funny. It's very funny, okay? I went with realism as a letterer and <laughs> removed all the dialogue in space. Yeah, that's what you guys should do. Absolutely. Like dialogue, no one can hear you. Maybe some of these are yellow. And we've got a lot of little uh, boxes and stuff and things back here. And so I'm just selecting it. And I'm not really thinking about this as light or shadow, but just it's just stuff. Like it's just the little details so that this wall is not, you know, entirely flat color. And there's a little shelf back there maybe there's something glowing in there that's important I don't know So I'm going to select that background, invert it, which will, uh, you know, that'll flip the selection to everything else. Uh, and then I'm going to go to my panels layer and use that to select the foreground only. That's what that layer is for. And let's see, where do I... Yeah, let's do it this way. Make a point to talk to uh, Drew while you're at a, we were at a con together. We talked about the Whitewater Center here in Charlotte last year as con. I think that's where I met him. I'm pretty sure. It's been years since I've been to that show, though. Uh, hey, Mr. Woods, welcome. Thanks to all the members that are here, by the way. I see y'all. All right. Let's see. Speaking of seats, I I I started going to the gym because I feel like my body is load bearing again, and um, I uh I got some some uh, seat covers that are for uh you know keeping sweat and stuff off of your. Uh, off of your seats because you don't want that in there all the time, you know? It's not going to smell very good. And uh, I got to say, like, they weren't the, I mean, they weren't the, the, the most expensive things in the world, but uh, they work. They're impressive. It's been a while since I bought something. I'm like, this actually works the way I wanted it to. <laughs> so... So I was happy to see that. This guy is what's he got? He's got like a gaming chair. He thinks he's cool. I'm pretty sure. Two tone. Oh, hello everyone! Nice to catch the stream live. Going all in, hairless style. I <laughs> I get it. No, the the beard's coming back. The the beard I had to cut off for uh medical reasons but uh 
I, I cut all my hair off because it's not really growing in very much anyway. <laughs> so I figure I might as well just get ahead of that. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I want I don't be that guy that's like trying to cover the bald spots and whatnot. It's like, Hey, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's gone. <laughs> it's going. Yeah, no, I actually asked, I asked my, uh, my, my barber guy, uh, cause he had just done some, you know, kid with a full head of hair that looked great. And, uh, it was like a cool haircut. And I'm like, I don't have enough up there to do the cool haircut, huh? He's like, nah, probably not. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's time. It's time. But yeah, you know, I, I saw some pictures of, of myself over the weekend at a, at a shindig and it was like, oh man, it's going. It's going. So I'm just I'm just getting ahead of it. That's all. Uh, yesterday I entered a clip studio paint contest just weeks after I watch your live stream and your tips lesson made a lot of sense when I use it to work on my art. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate you watching. You've been around a little while. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. This dude, I don't think we have any established colors for any of this stuff. And so... can do what we want which is my favorite <laughs> i love it when someone says oh no we haven't established anything on this great i don't have to look up reference and i can do what i want for the most part It's not always true that I can do what I want. Somebody's like, some editor is going to squash me tomorrow because of that. Actually, this whole pilot sucks. This guy's got the... Um like every girl's haircut in a video game that like half shave thing are we are we gonna are we past that now can we move on from from that that that's the only haircut that uh female characters are allowed to have in some in some games <laughs> So we've got like most of the base colors kind of here already. And what color do I want that to be? I don't know if I like that orange. I like that better. Lovely, I think. All right, so we'll just like light this guy with all that green. It'll look nice and dramatic, perhaps. How many pages can I color in a day? 
and the average those are those are two very different <laughs> numbers uh but um hey kurt i do want to note that this story was co-written by taki soma with me all the same people drew yourself taki as replaceable well how about that thank you mark i will uh i will update uh I will update the description with everybody's stuff. Definitely not trying to leave anybody out. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for uh, including that. Yeah, and Mark's uh, Mark's uh, was is it fair to say Mark you're one of the one of the ringleaders behind this project? <laughs> I don't know what he calls himself, you know, Grand Poobah or, or, you know, Boss Man. No, I'm kidding around. But, uh, yeah, I'm loving the book, man. Everything I'm seeing. <laughs> All right, where was I? Sorry, I, I derailed myself there. Hello, hello, Mr. Redacted Computer. How's it going? Welcome back. Trying to decide how let's do. I'm going to put some light uh, coming up from the bottom, I think, first. And then have I drank coffee? I, I, I don't drink coffee. Mm-mm. Somehow I survived uh, working nights in a hospital for a year, and I still don't drink coffee. <laughs> they all thought there was something terribly wrong with me, I think. While producing this anthology, we really spent a lot of time trying to figure out who would work the best with one another. Well... I can tell because <laughs> to me, it's like th these, these, uh, both of these stories, Eric's and Drew's, uh, are right up my alley. And so I think you did good. And I think we, obviously, I think we look really good together. And in, in fact, uh, let me show you all the other story that we're doing. Uh, and I, I featured this page in a, in a, in a tutorial yesterday, but I just wanted to show you all like another another look on this book of, of a finished page um but this is another part of the book from uh, another story from uh drawn by eric eric donovan and i'm just i'm so impressed with uh i mean the thing that kills me both of these guys is you, no matter how close you get to it you know i'm like zoomed up like you know you can see eight pixels wide it still looks fantastic you know, not everybody's art works that way. <laughs> Some of them, you, you zoom up halfway and I'm like, oh, wait, let's back up, <laughs> back up. But no, not these. But yeah, I, I, I really, really like this art. Um, makes my job easy too. <laughs> Uh, don't you ever wonder how much more productive you can be if you drank coffee? No, I don't, I don't want, uh, I don't want to start that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be the guy that like needs coffee, you know? Uh, because then, well, then you need it, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, there's that. 
I mean, I don't think my wife has to like beg me to take a ibuprofen for a headache. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm, I'm not one of those people that defaults to, oh, drugs, <laughs> including caffeine. <clears throat> I'm not saying you necessarily default to, to, to drugs, Jason, <laughs> but uh, you get what I'm saying. Hopefully. Uh, when uh, when you are working off camera, do you listen to music or watch TV and movies? Um, I am usually either... Uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm usually listening to some kind of music or maybe watching some YouTube thing that's not too interesting <laughs> like I, I'm not one of those people that can like watch stuff like at all like I know there's a lot of colors so like oh they watch movies or they rewatch uh, you know office seven times a week or whatever um yeah I just uh it doesn't it doesn't work for me um it's too distracting Yeah, I love the way uh, Drew draws clothing also. It reminds me a lot of, actually, it reminds me a lot of um, uh, Rebecca Isaacs, just in that, like, every wrinkle is, like, it's there. You can trace it, you can follow it. It's not like, oh, it's sort of a wrinkle, maybe, and you know. I like it. I like it. Caffeine is a vitamin, though. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> Look at that cutting and gratting. It has been a while since I've done that kind of thing, isn't it? Uh, right. I actually, I did some in the last issue of this, actually. Um. I don't know if I don't want to push this. I'm going to try something, and if I don't like it, I'm going to undo it. It really just kills all the contrast is what it does. Yeah, let's not do that. And I think I'm going to push. Yeah, we don't need that. Mm, I'm thinking, sorry. Um, I just realized that I meant to do some stuff on top of the lines over here that I forgot about. And so I'm going to go up here. This is like a textury brush that sort of looks like space nebulas. And I don't know if I want to keep all that quite like that, but I'm 
told y'all I'm trying stuff. Just trying stuff. And it's on a new layer. Yeah, let's go a little bit that way. And now I'm like just removing parts of it with the same brush. And so you can get some like textury stuff going on. But you don't want it to look like it's just in the corner of the panel either. Or I wouldn't. Yeah, I think I just like the idea of this being a little bit busier. We can always turn it down. We can turn the opacity down. My main tool coloring lately has been the lasso fill. Yeah, that's definitely uh, that's definitely one way to do it. Um, I'm going to select this whole bottom panel, and uh, my values aren't great right now on this panel. Uh, it's all too dark, and so I'm going to lighten some of it. going to darken the shadows a little bit yeah more like that questions comments I don't really need help with anything just cut anybody but uh, if you have Questions about anything, I'm happy to answer. And let's see this. Let's reflect those things from the other side a little bit. And let's put something on these screens. I like putting stuff on screens. Nothing crazy. You're barely going to be able to see it. <laughs> but but I'll know it's there. Um, where is... Sorry, my computer's doing weird stuff. Let me save this file. <laughs> That's the first thing I think. I'm like, uh... Let me save this where my computer goes we weird... Okay, that went away. All right. Okay, well. Bear with me a moment. The Windows key doesn't work. The search box doesn't work. Cool. <laughs> Just... Sorry guys, I have, uh, I don't know what is going on. My computer is not opening any windows. Boy, that was slow. I've got to be pressing alt or holding something or something is going on. Or I'm going to have to restart my computer. Sorry if all this noise is coming through.
Bear with me a second, guys. Sorry about the mix up here. Okay, uh, well, I guess we won't do that right now. Uh, literally, because I can't. <laughs> oh, is it because that error report was open? Oh, God, I hate Windows sometimes. Give me a second. <laughs> no, don't switch. I think I'm back now. Sorry about that. Um, how can I render a page in a simple way but make it look really detailed? Uh, put your detail in all the most important places on the image and do less detail in the places that are less important. Uh, I learned how to color comics watching your videos a couple years ago coming from a background illustration. I'm now working as a colorist on some Disney stuff. That's very cool. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, looking forward to your master's class, by the way. Haven't signed up yet, but planning to. Got to review the budget. I want to participate for a while, but not just a month or two. Uh, yes, thank you. I should probably, uh, I should bring that up. Um, restart Windows Explorer and Task Manager. That's exactly what I was attempting to do when all of a sudden it, it, I realized that there was some uh, error reporting window that just completely took over everything um let's see Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. All right. Again, really sorry for the delays here, people. I'm I'm working on something to put on these screens over here now that my computer is working. <laughs> thank you for the thank you for the tech support. Uh, I didn't even have to open a ticket for that one. Um. All right. Let's let's do these hands. Oh, that's perfect. Almost. That's a four by three monitor. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, I'm getting the ratio right. I like this and I don't know I'll pro I'll dress this up with a little bit probably one more little detail pass but I'm I kind of like how simple this looks I think it works in uh, without a lot of rendering Shelly Plager, Plager. Uh, 
uh, we wrote two stories in this anthology. The other one, also colored by Kurt, is called Irreplaceable. Yeah, that that one, uh, I got it here. I colored this a few weeks ago on the stream, I think. So if you guys, uh, let's see, where where is a page I can, yeah, here's one. Here's the other story he is referring to, in case you're curious. Also, Drew. But yeah, it looks great. I really, I really like how this book looks. <clears throat> yeah, I think I, I could do a better job of separating the values on some of the stuff that's in front of them. It's all a little too dark, I think. doing a lot of staring at it that's a good sign <laughs> usually means we're getting close and uh, all of the duct manufacturers on this in this universe they have the same orange ones <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making sure we from a continuity standpoint you know that's very important I gotta make sure the orange duct work is represented no, I, I I did that on a uh, on another on another story in this too. On the other one, the other one. Where's it at? Uh... Oh yeah, here we go. I got I got I'm, I'm, it's, this is this is the important stuff here. You know, so we got the orange ducks again. I mean, this is the kind of continuity that you get when you hire me. Is we make sure the important aspects of the story such as such as that are uh yeah <laughs> oh man good stuff all right let me see if i got something to put on yeah let's do It's interesting seeing uh, the work. Uh, it does add more depth to the image with the highlights. It looks good in squint. The stream must be special for you. Oh, hey, Shelly. How's it going? <laughs> I didn't realize you were here, too. Uh, let's see. It's interesting to see the work in uh, complete in real time. Typically, you just see the finished page. Yeah, and if you're new to, like, all of this and you have no idea what's going on like you don't know under like coloring comics this is all new which is probably none of you uh i do work pretty fast it's not uh it's not uh you know it's not a standard you should hold yourself to to knock pages out in an hour or two um i mean this is a simple page also it's basically you know it's two big you know two big panels uh but yeah, I, I, you know, don't try to compare yourself. <laughs> All right. I, I think I found, hey, we're going to use, uh, where's it at? There we go. And whoops, I lost it. Hold on. Let's move that up to there. Actually, let me get a little bit closer here. Nobody asked for this kind of stuff, and maybe nobody wants it. But every now and then, I'm just like, oh, can I, can I put something in that? <laughs>
don't worry it's not gonna look like this when it's done <laughs> and we'll select both of those put a mask on it merge that so now they're both just on a normal layer so I'm going to set them to overlay no I'm going to set them to screen no I meant <laughs> oh. multiply there we go And I'm actually going to turn some of that green, whoops, and turn some of that green down. Let's see, what layer are we on? Right there. Now, maybe nobody even notices that, but I'll know it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Did I accidentally, like, color something? Was that that color? I don't remember that standing out so much. Maybe it wasn't. Oh, and I'm, I'm brightening those little things too. I'm just trying to get the contrast where you can see that there's something in there. And, and we can always, like, you can do a little glowy stuff on top. If you wanted to, which I don't know if I do. Probably spent entirely too much time on that, but <laughs> I just I don't want to do anything that like is jarring. It, 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 you if you start uh, as a warning to any beginners out there, you're like, oh, he did this cool thing with this thing. I'm gonna do it everywhere. Like, take a breath, make it subtle. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. I have to be careful. A lot of beginners follow me, and I'm like, I don't want to start bad habits. <laughs> Going on from your lesson on unique colors, are you able to explain your thought process on making the ducks the most unique color in that spaceport? Uh, it doesn't matter when it's background stuff like that. I mean, it's not really about the color so much as it is just what it's doing. You know, the, the, the value, the hue, the saturation levels, all that stuff. Um, you know, it's just providing a little contrast. Um, but yeah, unique color doesn't always mean like, oh, that's going to stand out, you know? Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, Mark, uh, I brought Kurt's course years ago. I didn't know that long before this book was conceived. So it's particularly fun that Kurt is working on it. That's so interesting. Well, thank you for checking that out. Um, comparing mainly what you would have done to what Kurt is doing. Um, yeah, I actually thought about that a lot lately, like, uh, because on, on one of the other, uh, let's see, I don't, I don't think I have it open anymore, but yeah, on, on one of the other pages, I was thinking, the one that I did the breakdown on in the recent video, you know, I, I could have done that panel any number of ways, and I, and that's something that I, I, I want to do a better job of, of explaining sometimes, because I, I think especially if you're there's so many because it's a channel about coloring tutorials like i'm going to get a lot of people that are relatively new or at least newer than me and it's one of those things that like how do i put this um because i explain something a certain way in a given panel doesn't mean that it's the only way or the even a right way. I mean, it's just a way, you know. Um, and so, 
I, 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 I think sometimes like maybe I should give other takes on things or like, or, or, or another sketch or something just to show like, you could almost make the opposite decision of every decision I made and it would still work, you know? Um, but I, I, I do worry because based on the comments that I get, sometimes on the channel there are people that fall into these little grooves of oh he does it this way this is what you're supposed to do and i i fight that pretty hard as much as i can <laughs> but uh anyway what is uh where was i what is the differences uh in your coloring process between coloring a cover and coloring interior pages amazing work uh thank you very much um in lots of ways to skin a cat absolutely um, I, it's not that it's, it's too different of a process technically. Um, I'll say like, typically the goals are a little bit different. You know, it's like with, with a cover from my standpoint, you know, is, is pretty much always like, how do I make this? <laughs> we do talk about contrast a lot. I'm thinking in terms of how do I contrast my cover with everything else on the shelf. Like, I think in those terms a lot for covers, and I don't necessarily think that way on interiors, you know? Uh, covers are one of the things where you're literally in competition with other covers, you know? Um, and so that's, that's something that I always try to keep in mind is that Covers are meant to be eye-catching and eye-grabbing and, and all those sorts of things, obviously. But I, I really, really push that with covers quite a bit. I mean, just mathematically pushing the contrast as far as possible most of the time. Um, uh, in a way that looks obviously looks good. I'm not saying that. But just um, there are... Um, that's something that on interiors, you know... It's not like, oh, I really have to make sure this guy really stands out in this panel because otherwise the audience isn't going to find him. Like, you know, it, it's, it's not, he's right there in the middle of the panel. So it's not like I'm having to like, you know, do work to, to, to get you to, to, to notice or anything. Um, but it's still, it's the same principles and it's a lot of the same principles, um, uh, you know, uh, but not crank quite as high like if, if if that's a way of of putting that i don't know but um anyway uh what else uh da, 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 uh oh seeing opposites of the same art yeah i mean it, it's just like you know you can have a, a a dark focal point on a light background or you can have a light focal point on a dark background like and, and like that's what i mean is like Almost any good decision color wise can be like inverted and, and you'll get, you know, I mean, it's not necessarily going to work on every page is what I'm saying. But like from a, uh, from just a, uh, an art standpoint, there are a lot of options. You have always have lots of options. And, and I, and I, I say it all the time on this channel, you know, how there are as many ways to color as there are, um, colorists. And that is true. Um, <clears throat> but like at this point, you know, in this drawing, um, the, the work of like, uh, the color storytelling, I would say, is done. I mean, you basically have, uh, I've got a warm um, background I've, uh, that, that's red. I've got a, a cooler uh, green foreground. Uh, I tend to think in big, dumb shapes like that. And it looks good most of the time because it's very simple. Um, and um, at least that's how my brain works. I can't speak for anybody else. <laughs> Let's look at another page here while I'm just rambling on. Looks like we have a... Oh, yes. I, re I read the script for this, and I was just like, oh, oh, this story is so good. 
This story is so good. Um, I won't spoil the story here, uh, but just know that I like it. How am I doing? Uh, 115, what time is it? It's almost 11. So, yeah, let's, let's break down this page. We'll get it going, at least, and I might finish, and I might not. You know what? I didn't do any on that. I didn't do any glows. Or not, or not many glows, anyway. There's probably not many places that it needs it. Not every page necessarily needs glowing things. Uh, but when you, when you do have... Uh, when you do have lights and spacey stuff, then something's usually reflecting. But again, it's like subtle, just the tiniest little, maybe there's a light reflecting there, and maybe, you know, keep it, uh, don't go nuts. Don't go nuts with it. Um, yeah, I don't really think this needs a bunch of glowy stuff, but we can do a few little, a few lights maybe. Yeah, because in monitors, I mean, they glow, but they don't, they don't cast light, like a spotlight. I, I, that's one thing I, I will say, I've noticed with a lot of, again, I look at a lot of beginners artwork because of the nature of, I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot of people send me stuff like you don't have to do this on every light source okay like yes it is emitting light but it doesn't have to glow like that if you want to do something subtle maybe it looks cool but not every light bulb throws 50 feet you know what I mean you don't have to show it <laughs> Unless it looks cool. All right, let's set this one up. I, sh I have an action for this. I keep forgetting. I don't know if it even works. Let's see if it works. I did everything but change that to normal and do that. <laughs> oh well. Um, I love the way you uh, gave so much depth to that panel. Yep, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if my monitor glowed like that, I'd be wearing sunscreen. I know, I know. Um, so this uh, this location has not been established uh, with any colors. I don't think anything. Well, yeah, he told me nothing's really been established color wise. Um, and. I, and so I don't think there's any, I'm gonna just, I'm double checking the script here just to make sure. I've, I've read it, but I'm wanting to make sure that there's not like, oh, the planet must be green or whatever. I'm, I'm almost positive that it said it could be anything. Uh, the planet is lifeless. <laughs> the surface can be anything, yeah. Uh, I, I love, by the way, uh, I don't know if Mark's still here or not, but if I was an artist, uh, I would love Mark scripts because I, uh, it seems like pretty often it's like, hey, it doesn't really matter what this is. What do you want to draw? Do you want, you know, like that, like for things that don't matter, like the, like the state of the ecosystem of this planet doesn't really matter. If if Drew was in a mood to draw a jungle, he could have drawn a jungle. Um, but I like the fact that he is, you know, willing to. Uh, you know, work with the artist and let them do what they want to do because you're going to get better stuff. And to me, it's a sure sign of like a beginner writer that's just like dictating every little, you know, every little thing. Um, so yeah, I just, I thought I would throw that in there. I think I want to make this place look about as dead as it can possibly be because from a story standpoint I think that's what it needs and again I'm being kind of vague about story stuff right now because 
I want you guys to check out this book and enjoy this story as much as as much as I did. <laughs> And if you're going to make something look dead, then let's not use any bright colors or anything that uh, looks too alive. <laughs> I actually kind of like it really gray. I think I like it. It really is very fitting. Uh, so let's do that. Um, let's see, let's separate this, this little, uh, rock is, whoops, is on a different plane, and so we need to make it a different color, so that it has got a little depth to it, we need that right now. And then as we go back toward the sky, I'm actually like gonna just pick that sky color and start laying that in in the far, far background. Just a little bit. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us a little bit of uh, atmosphere here. And uh, and boy, I, I like uh, I like doing planets. I love doing organic stuff like this because guess what? Like you can't really screw it up. <laughs> I mean, you could. I guess you could. Um, but it's hard. I'm just letting the brush, you know, handle the opacity here. Somebody asked me, like, what's the the opacity and flow on your brush? I don't even know where to look. So the opacity is 100, and there is no... Is there flow? Is there flow in Clip Studio? I don't even think there is. Or maybe something else they don't call flow. Texture density? That's not it. Brush density? Maybe that's it. 190 is that it I don't I don't know somebody asked me that in the comments the other day and I'm like uh, I, don't know. I never looked I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna select everything past about here in the distance. And actually we'll grab this little guy too. And on a clipping mask on top, I'm going to change the color of those lines. And we just get instant atmosphere, instant depth. It's too blue. There's no reason for it to be that blue. But uh, yeah, it pushes everything back a little bit. I'm going to go down to flats and just change those so I don't have to select them again. And again, just like grabbing that sky color.
and I'm kind of following the contours of the, well, I'm not kind of, I am following the contours of the lines here as often as possible. So all these little striations and things he's drawn, if your brush strokes follow that, well, it just looks better. Yep, this place does look pretty dead. Um, I'm thinking about what all is on that layer. Let me just merge all of that. I'm wondering if I, yeah, I'm gonna warm up the sky a little bit, which cools off the ground a little bit. How am I doing? I haven't talked to y'all in a while. What's going on? Everybody good? Let's see. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I see some scripts that are so overly descriptive about every little minute detail and include embedded photo references. I can imagine that being a little boring or insulting. I don't know. Photo references, I'm I'm cool with, and I think a lot of artists are too, because it just, it gets the writer's point across. It, it doesn't mean that he has to, like, copy it. Like, and, and then this script is actually a good example. Um, like... Uh, like, you know, I don't remember what, what, I don't remember offhand what all it was, but like, there was a couple of things that, you know, uh, the Mark and, uh, Taki had very specific ideas about, you know, we want this thing to look a certain way. Um, well, the artist takes that and it informs what they're doing, but it's not like he copies it or makes a duplicate of it, or he's going to put his own, you know, his, put his own spin on it. He's going to do something a little different. So, um, and, and I don't know. Maybe there are artists that are like, no, I don't. You know, I want to. I want to just come up with all of it out of my head. And you know, that's that's cool too. But but yeah, I'm actually like, I always like when I see photos because I'm like, this is a guy that knows like what he wants. Like, and you have no idea how important that is to, especially on. And like that's not the case here. Everyone here is really experienced. But when you're working with a lot of when I've worked with some younger writers or people that just are new to it, half the battle is like getting in what's in their head onto the page and on and into the art, you know? And so anyway, uh, I'm thinking of a specific script where it was very much implied the writer wanted the art to match exactly. And, and that art and that writer is not going to get, you know, they're not going to get the best work out of that artist, you know? I don't think, you know, um, anyway, but yeah, no, I've, I've, I've been really fortunate the last couple of years with all the teams I've worked with that all the, all the stuff you guys hear me, like if I ever complain about like something, it's probably from something I saw or dealt with like years ago. <laughs> uh, you start to be able to sniff it out, like in the email. I'm like, oh wait, <laughs> this guy's a little too concerned about whatever. Um, okay, wreckage, wreckage, smoke, uh, plane, wreck. Uh, in the real world, it's pretty black. And a 
That sounds like a plan to me. So the one thing that does is, uh, well, one, it's we don't have anything that dark in that area, so that immediately starts to, 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 to be a something that the eye is starting to, to notice. And maybe there's a little bit of flame down here. If you're like me, you don't get it quite as orange as you meant to. You put an overlay layer on top, and that will definitely get it there. <laughs> I, I do color like a robot sometimes. <laughs> it feels it feels that way sometimes. Yeah, I gotta say, and I don't, I don't, I don't think Mark would mind me saying saying this. Um, th this is the first project that I've ever had anyone tell me that they sought me out specifically and like found artists. Uh, not that I mean, I'm not trying to say who's first or more important or anything like that, but I've I've never had someone admit <laughs> that it was like we want we built this for you to do, and so I just I really really uh, appreciate that quite a bit I don't think anybody's ever maybe it's happened but they certainly didn't tell me I don't think it has <laughs> but um, anyway uh, let's see it's kind of true the story may be awesome but with bad art that goes not far uh, but a great artist can make a mediocre story look good maybe so maybe so uh, your English is fine. Your English is great. It is much better than anything that uh, other language I can speak. Um, I like when a writer includes photo references for inspiration, as long as it's not intended to be step-by-step -step instructions. Exactly. Uh, let's see. I think I got everything. I think I caught up now. And I kind of... I, th I, I like the idea of of like uh maybe the ground is uh dis the disturbed ground is maybe a slightly different color like this place never gets i don't know maybe it never sees a spaceship and so all of a sudden there's like nothing's interacting with the ground so maybe what's underneath is a different color what did i see that on recently Maybe it was Star Wars. <laughs> that red, that salt planet from one of those movies. But yeah. And what else is down here? We got a spaceship broken into pieces. What color did I make this sky in this place? So it's it's a warm warm-ish sky. So we'll do a little a slightly warm color on the shadow side of these things. And then I'm thinking the whole ground should be like scorched. Because, well, it's on fire. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
I'm going to do this. Is this on a separate layer? Yeah, it's on a separate layer because I'm going to overdo this and then dial it back. Um, and it's not really the right color, is it? Yeah, something like that. And now on a mask for that, I'm gonna actually make this look right. <laughs> the, the texture itself is not following the perspective, and so I'm 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 not wanting to uh, that to look like that exactly. That should have been part of that. Really just trying to make sure this thing is not uh, pretty. It should be, uh, it should be jacked up. The framing on this panel is just gorgeous. Like this, this, this ship swooping in, you've got the, like he simplified the background, like this negative shape. It's basically just like, hey, here's a ship. Um, really well done. I'm still seeing little rocks I'm forgetting to color separately. Throwing a little glow on that rock behind it, maybe. And if you're one of those people that might be thinking, well, I was like, well, man, you you spent half an hour just on this one page, and the other one took an hour for the whole page. Like, this is the sort of thing that like is it is a smart use of of when you're an artist is you know getting one solid background establishing shot for every scene somewhere is like it's all you need most of the time you know here well there's no background really here again simple background here simple background here we don't have to do that in every panel but if you set it up the first time it goes a long way goes a long way everyone here knows why we'd seek you <laughs> seek you out thank you very much mark i appreciate that i guess yeah yeah if you're watching this stream i would i would hope so <laughs> uh I appreciate you sharing all of this. I just started digital coloring at the Kubert School, and it's Kubert School? Kubert School? I don't know. I never did learn how to say that. Somebody tell me. Uh, and it's something I really want to improve with. Now, I've been more of a pencil inker up until now. Awesome. Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. And I'm gonna I'm changing the the temperature on the ship just from warm to cool uh, because uh, on the against this sky especially I think uh, that will look good. And then we 
have we have some engines. Whoops. Again, on top of the lines, what color did I make those engines on the last one? Did I yellow? They were yellow. It looks like a very similar ship, and so I'm going to use the same. You know, they 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 use they use the same engine guys. <laughs> And it's always funny to me, after I put a light source in the scene, I'm like, oh, well, in that case, that means that, like, this rock, which I need to change on the flats layer so I can select it next time. Um, I was like, oh, well, this rock would reflect more light now. It's like sometimes until I get the light in the scene, I don't know what I'm, what I, where all it's going to go. <laughs> you know? Uh... So yeah, we can pull that out a little bit more. Oops, excuse me. And do I want to try to do a little dust up here? Yeah. Because in surely those uh, engines make this thing hover somehow. <laughs> I don't know. It's subtle. Somebody will notice. Maybe. Then, so that we really sell the fact that this thing is made of metal, I'm going to get uh, a good bit brighter and do just a couple of little, it doesn't take much, a couple of like small specular type, you know, highlights will go a long way to make something look like it's reflective and it doesn't take much work. Yeah, I'm glad I went with the really gray planet now because it really makes the fire and the ship and all that stuff really look like it's not supposed to be there. <laughs> Which is the feeling I got from the script on this. It's like, what? What is this? This isn't right. <laughs> So what's bugging me right now is the ground is the same color as all of these little mountain things. And if I want to make this look like it's on the ground, it needs to probably be lighter. Because the ground would actually you can imagine the the ground acting as like a big mirror sort of and 
that means that it's going to reflect the sky. It's going to be brighter than like the side of these things would be. And I'm doing this on a normal layer. To brighten this up a little bit. But then it wouldn't be in the... Wouldn't be reflecting through here or here. Because of those things. So yeah, I think that's starting to look a little bit like more of what I was wanting. And some of these hard lines I'm not nuts about. We can blend, but I'm also kind of like them. <clears throat> I think I'm happy with that. All right, how am I doing on time? Almost two hours. Um, it's pronounced like Hubert. Okay. Uh, what did the artist think of what of that last <laughs> sick cover you did? Uh, thank you. Um. The spherical piece on the right is a mech that detaches. It doesn't happen in this story. Oh, uh, here? Okay. I think that's what you're talking about. Spherical piece on the right. Yeah, we're talking about on the big ship. Sorry, I, I didn't look at I don't know when this comment was made. But um, the artist really liked that cover. <laughs> he, he was happy with it. Um, really happy with it. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's always interesting, and this happens fairly regularly, where, um, well, it doesn't always get called out in the script ahead of time. I don't always find out till later. That's usually when it happens. <laughs> but, uh, we yeah, always like, like I was doing a, a book the other day where, uh, what was it? It was for end after end. And, uh, there was, there was a, a scene where like, what was it? it? It was, it was like, it was hinting. Like the script called for some paintings to basically be hinted at. It was like, there are paintings you know, in this, uh, whatever, you know, uh, in this, uh, it was like a cave or something, uh, that we won't see until later, but they should look like lush and detailed. <laughs> it's, it's like, but we don't know what they look like yet. And so, you know, from a continuity standpoint, again, like it usually is, you get a little fudging going on there, but, uh, anyway. Good stuff. Uh, so we got this big dark shape that is, again, like like Drew's framing and compositions are just fantastic. Um, that is, uh, you know, uh, framing up this panel from the right side. And uh, so I'm going to actually, let me not select that. There we go. 
and most whoops most of this is in shadow or I think I want to do it that way yeah I think I do yeah because especially if it's if it's darker then we can do a little bit of that like uh, the light from the fire which will look cool gives us a, a very subtle sort of uh, visual cue even though again like somebody might think this is beating people over the head with it but I don't think so um, the orange flame and the wrecked ship like we know that's pretty much where he is but if I if I pull a little bit of that down into where these people are it's just another indicator that, like, oh, this is the same thing. This is the same place. Um, again, like, it's subtle, but I think it helps. And I'm not doing the inside of it quite the same orange. And let's see, this, is that meant to be sky, I think, or ground at least? <clears throat> uh, assuming you upgraded to 2.0, how do you like, oh, it's Takisoma. Welcome. This is so cool. Got it. Gang's all here. Um, I have not upgraded yet to uh to 2.0 i'm 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 i don't see a need to just yet and um until you know i don't know until they do something that i i feel the need to, to upgrade for um uh, i probably won't um i need to try it though the, the problem is you can't try it like I, I think you only are able to uh you know what's the word like you have to change your license and i'm not really quite ready for that yet <laughs> but it's so nice of you to come by i really really appreciate that uh that's pretty cool um the color blending i know is like a per tool setting like it's not just on everything so I, you have to go in and you know uh what do you call it uh do it like for each tool is how it was described to me you know you don't have to change your license number yeah i think i knew that i'm just i'm a, i'm more worried about you know, a mission critical computer <laughs> and just it not doing what I want it to do or something, but it's probably fine. It probably, I mean, it, clip has been pretty good usually about, you know, not doing like massive program breaking bugs, <laughs> uh, like some other companies will with their big releases. But, uh, but no, thank you all for coming by. It's it, it really uh, it means a lot. I'm coloring in a really large snowy landscape with a city in the middle. Do you have any videos for coloring small buildings so they don't look like one block of color? Um, well, one thing to think about is that 
it might be okay if they're a big block of color. <laughs> like, I'm not saying they need to be one flat color, but like, if, for example, if, let's see, right, we're gonna do a little tangent lesson here real quick. Uh, I'm gonna zoom up so I don't have to draw the whole thing. Um, but let's say that, all right, hold on. Let me do this real quick. So like, here's a sky and then like here's a mountain that's snowy and here's a mountain that's snowy and and your little town lives like right here let's say like one thing you could do is you know go into uh into you know the whatever it looks like and slightly change the colors you know make it a, i mean and i literally mean choose colors that are close to what you have close in this box like i'm not speaking like you know in code or anything close <laughs> okay this is close that is far away okay let's, let's look about it that way so like if you're starting here then try like well what happens if we dab some other colors that are nearby like it's one it's not going to affect it too much because all the values and shapes and everything are all pretty close to the same thing but you could mix it up just by having a few different colors that are very close in that you know little family um and uh your your the shadows if it makes sense to do some shadows it might not but if it, if you have something that has a shadow side um, you know, the shadows are going to take on the color of the skies, you know, whether it's snow or grass or whatever. So, you know, you could throw some, the lighting color for your sky around. That'll probably look cool. So, but yeah, like, uh, whether, whether I like, if I do, if I do this on this side of the image and then on this side of the image, I do the same color but like with slight differences you know with a little bit of saturation a little bit less saturation a little bit darker a little bit whatever like when we back off of these like it doesn't really matter you know like it still looks like a bluish gray field of color even though there's a couple colors there um so yeah yeah you, know, you don't you don't you don't have to think so um what's the word kind of mechanically about it if you don't uh, want to <clears throat> learning to handle big distances outside your comfort zone look at some pictures like go look up some pictures of snowy switzerland or something and <laughs> and see what they look like um that would be my advice I have an idea here. Let's do like a really dramatic shadow on this guy. As if this door is got him in like half shadow or something. I think that would look cool. So I'm trying to make a cool shape out of this now. If we do it like that ish, I'm trying to think of how like an interesting lighting shape. Uh, I think I know what we could do, but let's see. If we take all of this. We just want him. Anything else selected? No. And, oh, we got some lights here. I'll take those off. There we go. So this guy is in shadow coming off his ship. And what color did I? I just drew this guy. What color or colored this guy? Sorry, I'm thinking. This is very dangerous to be thinking. 
yeah basically like it helps for me to like i know i want the value to be about that dark and so i'll, I'll put a value in and then start like you know finding the the actual colors that are close to that value um At least to start, that's what I'm trying to do here. The other thing I'm thinking about is like, is that suit actually green or is it just, is it green because it's the green of that cockpit, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually thinking it's more about the cockpit than the actual color, but we've got flexibility here. <laughs> on a separate layer <laughs> yeah if all else fails try a different layer I just I kind of like the idea of this guy coming out of the shadows yeah that looks cool and then uh, on the rest of this, um, we'll light him with just the ambient light of the environment. If I wanted to color, if I wanted to put more detail in it, which I think I do. And sometimes what I'll do for this, when I know exactly that I want just a slightly brighter version of whatever's in there, is I'll make a couple of selections and then do it as a levels adjustment. Because if I know that the ambient light is close to a white color, then just going straight to a levels adjustment will do that. Uh, of course, you can tint these too. Like if I wanted to tint this cool or tint it warm or whatever. Um, this place is pretty dead, so there's not a lot of color, but we'll do it a little bit cooler. And uh, this is not intended to be like a really strong light source. It's kind of just an ambient light that only exists in the shadows of this panel. And so That's what I'm thinking here. I thought that I was on a, did I not make a level adjustment? Am I crazy? I thought I just did. Maybe I didn't. Let me try that again, sorry. <laughs> I was like, where's the levels adjustment I was on? Close enough. There we go. I thought that color was a little off. So you can imagine this as being like the sky is lighting him in the area of the shadow that is not being lit by this bright light from the top. Does that make sense? So like you've got direct lighting on his arms and on his jacket and everything else is indirect, if that helps.
that arm that leg is just a little bit in front and so that's why it's getting a little bit more light and da, 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 da. I kind of think this would be lit up wouldn't it Just a few green lights to remind you that, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? That cockpit we were in is back there somewhere. We could even why not let's make him really dramatic and let's do a rim light rim lights make things 40 percent cooler <laughs> pretty sure wrong layer there we go yeah he don't like he's up to nothing at all Perfectly cool, man. Nothing's going on. I'm probably about at a point where I need to shut it down for the day. My stomach is starting to growl. This is going to be a cool story, though. All these stories are cool. Uh, morning, Kurt. Thought I missed you this morning. Pulled an all-nighter. Got three pages done. Now I understand why not to do all-nighters. All no, I don't do all-nighters, man. If you if you call me with, like, you need an all-nighter, uh, your boy's getting paid or he ain't doing it. <laughs> uh glad this one is making again thanks kurt eat something hey chris how's it going yeah thank you guys so much for coming in i really appreciate that um here's what we got done today uh on here i don't know if i like that that big orange thing at the top up there or if it's just messing up or if it's just messing this thing up i did it and i'm not i'm not 100 percent sold on it let me back it off some maybe that's the problem anyway i'll keep pushing and pulling these things around uh for a little bit but um Kurt's colors are so subtle i barely remember all the overpaint in the 90s <laughs> well i I've, i have never been one to like want to just render the hell out of things for the hell of it like just because like you know there, there there's places on this where it needs a little rendering there's places it doesn't you know and uh and so i i definitely try to uh i mean that's another layer of storytelling in and of itself you know is that there are there's things that are detailed there's things that are less detailed you know it's all um it's all uh it's all uh it's all contrasts <laughs> um appreciate you being a part of this card thank you again mark yeah thanks for again for having me on this uh it's gonna be this is gonna be awesome i'm looking forward to seeing it finished uh you think it's a good idea to use highlights mod for shadows i don't know what that is um yeah i have no idea what that is <laughs> but any other questions before we wrap it up again thanks thanks for watching check the description uh, follow Magnetic Press on Twitter. 
I think they're on all the stuff, Instagram. They're more active than I am on social media. Uh, but yeah, uh, blackboxchronicles.com. If you want to get on the list for this book, the Kickstarter's coming this summer. And if you want to learn about coloring, there's stuff down there for that too. Become a patron, become a member, and you get a little cool symbol by your name, which is the main thing. But I also do, I do live streams every month for all my members and patrons that do feedback on their work and stuff like that. So if you want to join us, that's an option. What else? Click buttons. Yes, click a button of some kind. <laughs> there's, there's that. You got to click something. Hit all the internet buttons. Yeah, I'm really, 10 years on YouTube, I'm very polished at this, if you guys can't tell. With the with the ad reads there i really just nail them <laughs> i don't know man click something anyway thank you all again so much i i think i enjoy this as much as you guys do so i uh, will see y'all again next week if not sooner i got plenty of pages and everybody says i can color them on the channel so i probably will as often as i can all right i'm out of here take care see y'all next time